right, let's take a look at this. So these are certain patterns in the market we look for every day. We'll do a quick video to make sure we, uh, we got our mind right going into uh, every day trading these markets. So we had non-farm payroll today. So non-farm payroll is at 8.30. It's the first Friday of every single month. It's one of the uh, really major, it's the most best impact number you're going to actually get in, in the markets. Uh, you have the first week, first Friday's non-farm payroll. Then we go into the CPI, PPI, retail sales, and GDP. Um, those are the most important red impact levels that affect price action. And then we have the Fed minutes and also the Fed rate announcements that happen periodically. So that being said, when news comes out, and we can go to forexfactory.com and find out when these red impact numbers come up, because that will let us know when we're going to uh, likely have some nice volatility for a nice follow through. So if you go to forexfactory.com, you can look at this calendar. Uh, it's free it's free for everybody to get on to. And you'll see that this week we've had all kinds of news, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I like to go, go against the USD. I like to go the red impact number, red impact briefcase against the USD, right? So that will let us know uh, when we're trading the S&P, NASDAQ futures, you know, the Dow, you know, whether it be whatever markets you trade, that directly affects price. So we can see today that non-farm payroll came out at 8.30 this morning, non-farm unemployment rate, all right? So it came at 4.1% versus 4.2 expected. So how can we use that to, to our advantage on trading these markets. Well, if the number is released, when you're trading news events, the number is released, let's say at 8.30 like it was this morning. You wanna wait until three minutes after news. My rule of thumb has always been three to five minutes. I start stocking trades. When I got on the microphone this morning, we, we talked about waiting till 8.33 this morning. Wait till 8.33 this morning and start stocking our setups. So then you can look for this pattern recognition software that we have because these certain patterns repeat on a daily basis. All right, there's a markup phase in the market where our dual trend filter is green, 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 we're only looking to buy, and there's a, there's a, that's called an accumulation phase, and there's a distribution phase when the dual trend filter is red, red. That is a distribution phase. So going into the news at 8.34, right at 8.34, uh, great job, uh, Aaron and Sal, talking about looking for a failure with trend. And then I typed in before it happened, failure on deck. What does that mean? So at 8.34, we talked about failure on deck. Typed it in the room right around this level before she even came up. What a failure means is that if your dual trend filter is red, red, that means if you get to this outer zone, then we're not looking for a V, we're looking for a V top if it pulls in, but if it doesn't pull in, if a yellow trigger happens against trend, meaning if this dual trend filter goes red, green, red, green, now they don't agree, right? It means there's a transition phase going on, on in the market. And this is when I typed in in the room, right when the green dot appeared, failure on deck. What did I mean by this failure on deck when price is 82 and a half? And now we're sitting at 5,800. So we rallied almost 18 S&P points. And we knew ahead of time that this is our setup. Why? Because our dual trend filter, when it does not agree, dual meaning two, right? If it agrees, green, green, you're in an uptrend. But what if, it, what if it's been red, red, and then it turns red, green? Well, that means the market's in a transition to go to the other side, meaning start an uptrend. So a failure trade is that it just tells you that the market is transitioning. You get the yellow trigger to the upside. Here's your entry. The entry was 82 and a half plus or minus a few ticks, and you guys got on that this morning. Now, the next setup we're going to look for is you want a MOMO1, which I typed in the room. We want, before this came up, uh, we want MOMO1 to drive price. We want it to drive price higher. So this is a MOMO1 that comes up after a failure trade. Price starts driving. After Momo 1 came up, I typed in the room. We're looking for a V top. 
So at 8.39, I'm sorry, I said I'm looking for a V bottom in the market. What a V bottom comes, the V bottom came in at 8.42, three minutes later. Why I was looking for that, a V bottom, it happens when you are with the overall trend in the market. So if you are green, green, you're looking for a V bottom, right? And then you look for a MOMO one to drive price again uh, to the upside. Now what's neat about this is you can use our liquidity grab chart right next to us. Our liquidity grab chart has these structure dots. Now these are these little dots inside. Uh, this is a bar type that I created on my own that I recognized that if you get shallow retracements, then you can see price drive higher or lower based upon the strength of the market. So when we're looking for this, this is where the failure trade came in this morning. It drove price up, and then I said looking for a V bottom. As price comes down, if you hold these, these structure dots, I, I call it holding structure, and you get a pull in, meaning that bar, bar closes, that's called a sweet spot V bottom. Why? Because it's a shallow retracement with overall price driving that direction. This is a great way to trade news events, because if you see a sweet spot trade when it's green, green, it's driving price higher because it's a shallow retracement. It's taking all this counter trend trade money out, grabbing liquidity, and driving it higher. Now, what's neat about the setup this morning is this, is that before the news happened, I have market gaps in the market. And I drew these gaps in before the news even came out. Now, now this HVA moved up already, but it was down here lower. So we have big giant gaps in the market. I said our overall target this morning would be 5807 and a half. 5807 and a half from 82 and a quarter. So just a lot of positive energy to the upside. We have a lot of uh, big gaps in the market to the upside. And that let us know our target. So market profile, the daily and previous market profile that we use the two to four hour rotating profiles, they tell us our target. So that's our target. But going into the news, let's look at our upper chart. Going into the news event, we talked about how the large trend is up, right? It's all green. And so you can even look at the structure dots before news even comes up. And I mentioned this on the microphone this morning. I was like, we are above 65 and three quarters. So it lets me know. You can see it barely breaks structure when it's in your hard uptrend. This, these are all liquidity grabs. This is where the smart money is getting liquidity. Liquidity grab, liquidity grab, liquidity grab, grab and liquidity and then turn it green. But just a rule of thumb, if you are all green on our larger Rinko size with structure dots showing up, it lets us know that we're looking for this failure with trend. We're looking for a sweet spot bottom with trend. We're looking to drive price up to 5807. So we were on top of this this morning. Uh, we're right all, all over this. Um, these are leading indicators. These are not lagging. It's the same setup every single day. You go from a failure to Momo 1 to drive price, right back into a sweet spot trade. Momo 1 driving price, Momo 2. When Momo 3 comes up, the market could go parabolic on you, and you could see some uh, what I call climax buying. That's when all these counter trend traders that got wiped out, now they're trying to jump back into Momo 2, Momo 3. We don't want to participate in Momo 2, Momo 3. The only last shot you got at it is Momo 1, right? Momo 2, your probability of stop goes higher. Really, the trains really left the station after Momo 2, right? So what we want to do is we want to try to get on the failure trade right when the dual trend filters stop agreeing. That's the failure trade. A lot of you guys are getting really good at this. And then you want to be scaling when Momo 1 comes up. Whether you get a liquidity grab in here like I teach you or failure trade. 82 and a half, when Momo 1 came up, it was already 86 and a quarter. That's where you should be scaling. On this V sweet spot V bottom, this V bottom, we, we talked about this. I talked about this on the microphone three minutes before it happened. That's what we're looking for. Dual trend filter up, V bottom, same patterns every day. This pattern recognition software is strictly is looking for the order flow of the market. 
it's cat it's catching the wrongly positioned traders I call the WPTs on the other side of the market sweet spot V bottom now we're trying to drive price to our target so we want to try to get in in at the sweet spot V bottoms and the failure trades let let, let Momo one drive price after the failure let Momo one and two drive price after the sweet spot and let the runners run right you get this window of opportunity I call it the window of opportunity your window of opportunity is going to be right in this level say this V bottom is going to be in this level right here here's a window of opportunity of getting long why because once you get a sweet spot V bottom they're gonna start driving price they're gonna to try to grab liquidity in here they're gonna to try to grab liquidity with the liquidity grab then they're going to try to momo it long, meaning momentum's going to get long. They're going to try to drive price. All these buy stops are getting hit from this swing high. Think about it. This is why this system works so well. This is a swing high. What do you think is resting above the swing high? If these are all these all, all these algorithms, all these traders, all these wrongly positioned traders, what's resting above that swing high? What's resting above that swing high are buy stops. And this is a self-generating trade. Buy stops are resting just above this swing high. So what's going to happen? Once that swing high is broken, those buy stops are going to hit. It's going to be a self-generating trade. It's going to drive price. So that's why this system works so well and why this pattern recognition software works so well. Because what it's doing is, it's getting us into spots in the market where the wrongly positioned traders are I call WPTs over the last guys all these years we had the room open they're the wrongly positioned traders they're countering against trend our dual trend filter not only let us know here it went green red that we're transitioning to the upside that's where that's where a lot this is where a lot of traders got caught right here right there this swing high all these buy stops were at this swing high this is why failure works so well because if you look at this swing high, why does it fail your fire? It's catching all these wrongly positioned traders, these WPTs. The buy stops are right above that. All these algorithms are on the wrong side. That's why these trades work so well. That's why failures drive price. And a Momo drives price because not only you hit these buy stops, right? All these wrongly positioned traders that were short over here now are getting long with the Momo one right their buy stops are hitting it's covering price it drives it right so these are called what's what's called self-generating trades it's the same setups every day every day but you have to you have to understand that you don't want to look for you don't want to look for trade setups until around three minutes after news if I if I let me punch in to show you how leading this stuff is this is what I typed in the room it's very leading you can see on the bottom of I don't, Gerald, I don't know if you can put it down towards the bottom where they can see the I want to show them how leading this can be. They can see the chat. If you look on the chat, let's just take a look at this. Look in the chat. 835, failure on deck. So here's 835. 835 right in here. Failure on deck, right? Because we're stalking trades. Failure on deck. Why did I post that in the room? Because at 837 the failure came up. Why did I post that in the room? Because I recognized the software told me it went green red. Well, green red, you can no longer look for a V top. You gotta look for only a failure trade, and you're on the outer zone. Then at 836, at 836, when it starts when a failure comes up, failure's up, starts going up. I said V top on deck. Price starts driving, right? So it's a big heads up. It gave you almost, what, three to four minutes heads up on the V bottom. And then I put, need a Momo one to dry price. 
Well, when a MOMO 1 comes in, that tells me as a trader, when a MOMO 1 comes in, that buy stops are getting hit if we're buying. Our sell stops are getting hit if we're shorting. So now it's a self-generating trade because I know when MOMO 1 hits, I know they're getting caught. I know when a MOMO 1 hit, gets hit after a failure trade, I know this swing high back here, they're getting caught. The wrongly positioned traders, all these shorts, all through here, all these shorts got caught. All this short order flow got caught after news. So you want a MOMO 1 to come up to dry price after a failure trade. And you want a sweet spot be bottom to come up to dry price for the buy stops. It's the same exact setups on a daily basis. Now, price, what do, what, what do we look for now? What's the next setup we look for? We're looking for a V bottom. We're going to look for a V bottom. Because, why? Because we are green, green. We're green, green. We're looking for price to come down. And if it's going to be a really shallow retracement, you're going to hold structure dots. You'll hold these structure dots on my liquidity grab chart. Right now, we're right on structure. So if it's going to be a sweet spot trade, look how it's holding structure right now. You're going to get pulled in right now with the yellow trigger bar. If it's going to be a sweet spot trade like this, it's going to stop right on structure. If it doesn't and it starts closing a couple candles below it, that's okay. That's not a sweet spot because it's not a shallow retracement. It's a deeper retracement. We're just going to wait for a pull-in bar for normal V bottom. Now, when you when you look for a failure trade to come up is not when you're above structure or not even close to lower the zone. The reason I put failure on the deck is when these failure dots turn opposite of each other. So as soon as I get a red dot on my structure dots like this, this is a green red, green red right there, the first green dot right here, green red. As soon as this happens over here, then I would look for a failure trade. But failure trades don't happen until you get to the outer edge of the zone. Our zone's been back tested for 30 years on the S&P to be the most effective zone to catch failure trades and when we transition. So we know, based upon 30 years of data on the S&P, that this lower than the zone, if it gets close to it, that's your last chance for a V bottom, for it to trigger in and give us a yellow trigger. If not, you're watching for that failure trade to hit. Sure enough, it did today, said it's on deck, and it drove price really hard. So if we look at today's action, going into today's trading, we had our targets with our market profile. We know our big trend was up, so the push is up. You want failures to happen with the push. I mean, you can take them against the overall big push, but you love them when they happen with the push, especially if you're outside of market profile. But if you notice, if you look in the chat room, everything is leading. This is not after the fact recognition software. This is before price action even hits. Once you get in the rhythm of this, it's the same exact setups every single day. Failure, Momo 1, sweet spot, Momo 1. And the reason the failure works is taking the buy stops out. Before the sweet spot works, the reason that the V bottoms work because it's taking the buy stops out. We can use market profile as a guide for targets. We know target is 07 and a half. We knew that big gap this morning all the way down at 82. 82 long was 5807 and a half. That's previous market profile. How'd I come up with that number? My previous control points were here. Right, And these are two to four hour profiles. These are not 30 minute profiles. 30 minute profiles don't work very well. It doesn't show a lot of price action. I don't like to use them. I like to use two to four hour rotating profiles. It lets us know, just like we know, if we ever break 57.30 next week, if we ever get below this level, this market's in trouble. We could see a, a, a flash crash in the market if we get 57.30 break intraday. So we'll keep that in mind next week going into these levels. So what we do is, is we look at daily profiles like this to give us big gaps in the market where this market could run. 
Remember, market profile has been around since 1985. Price volume profile that we use has been around since 1994, thanks to Peter Stoudemire. And uh, it's a direct reflection of all the opponents, all the trading opponents in the market, every single one, all the algorithms, all the professional traders, prop firms, professional amateur traders, banks. And it spits out these big levels for us uh, as targets as we look for this pattern recognition software to find us these setups. So right now, as we as we talk about this, we're looking for a V bottom. V bottom. We want this to show a V bottom just like here. See a yellow trigger entry to come in. And where would be our target? Our target would be 5807 and a quarter. If we get down to this lower zone and we haven't got pulled in yet and it turns red green or green red. All right, you have a possible an outer edge trade with price if you're above HVA, which could happen. But if that doesn't occur and you get a failure trade, that could happen against overall big trend also. So we'll wait and see if this larger trend can push price up.